We are surrounded by it every winter, but how much do you really know about snow? Hey friends, thanks for watching D News. I'm Trace. It falls out of the sky. We shovel it on the sidewalk. We ski on it, we sled on it, we make snowballs with it. But do you ever stop to think about what makes snow? I do, because it's my job. Snow is made of a few basic ingredients, air, water, and a tiny bit of dust, volcanic ash, mica, or even particles from space that made it through the atmosphere. As the temperature drops, 180 billion molecules of water condense around the dust particles and freeze into an ice crystal. The colder the temperature, the sharper those ice crystal points are going to be. The crystals eventually clump, forming a snowflake. What you see falling isn't a single crystal, but these massive clumps. Though a single flake can grow quite large, like inches wide, and contain hundreds of individual paper-thin crystals. All snowflakes have six sides, always six sides, which means contrary to popular belief, they are not all different or unique. And in fact, they form a crystalline pattern and crystals follow very specific rules. So they are all essentially pretty similar. Snowflakes fall at 3.1 miles an hour. And as they do, the temperature, humidity, and wind speed will all affect the snowflakes consistency. The crystalline structures of snow are not white, but translucent and colorless, just like ice. They only appear white because they scatter all of the wavelengths of light equally. However, sometimes what's in the air can change the color of snow. Pollen, dust, ash, or other particles that the flakes pick up as they fall can make it look yellow, red, or even black. As much as 95% of the snowflake is made of air, trapped in between the crystal's arms and filaments. Once it snows enough, all of that air in the snowflakes will begin to absorb sound, which is why snowy nights feel so silent. Additionally, once the snow starts to pile up, the air in between the flakes makes for a really good insulator, which is why igloos and caves of snow are actually quite warming. Of course, lifting all that snow to make a cave could get kind of heavy, so make sure you dress in layers. The fattest flakes only weigh 0 0.02 grams. So for a pound of snow, you'd need 22,325 flakes, which could take a little while because they'd only fall at about 10 to 20 flakes per second per square meter. If you get enough snow and it gets really heavy, avalanches happen. When enormous amounts of snow pile up on a mountain with a 30 degree or steeper grade, things can get a little crazy. The weight becomes too much for those tiny crystals to hold onto one another, and eventually gravity pulls a sheet of snow, shearing it off the main body, and that's where you get an avalanche. You can make all the noise you want, it's not gonna make it happen sooner. Due to snow's ability to melt and refreeze, the layers of a mountain snowfall make layers just like in a sedimentary rock which is why avalanches are so unpredictable. Okay, I know the question on everybody's mind is how do you make the perfect snowball? Wait until it's 32 degrees and then use snow with just a little bit of moisture in it. Melting it in your hands is gonna make it pack better and add a little bit of pressure. Your hands are gonna hurt after a while, so be careful. You don't wanna hold that cold temperature against your skin. It could permanently damage it. But if you can last for a little burst, the tiny crystals are gonna stick together just right. Just pick your target wisely. If you like this and you learned something, go ahead and share it with your friends. And thanks a lot for watching D News. Tell us about your experiences with snow down in the comments and make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.